Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts back with part 7 of my Tamiya Volvo FH16 tow truck build. I am sorry that there are 7 parts. I hope to do it in 2 or 3. The thing is huge. There's a ton of things going on. I just couldn't do it. So here we go. 7 parts. But as you can see, it's done. We're going to finish it up in this video. Get all the clothing on it, the decals. Uh, it is a beautiful kit. The fit was fabulous. It's huge. I had a blast building it. Um, I think you'll have fun watching this video. At the end of this video, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take it outside in the evening and run it and go through the lighting and stuff. Um, I don't normally run these things, so uh, that'll be a little different. And at the very end, I'll put some still pictures of it uh, in high resolution so you can see how it turned out. Also, a quick note in this video, there might be some segments where there's some ambient background noise uh, of 102 degrees for about a week here so I'd have an air conditioning unit on in my shop and it, it makes some noise so I don't know how that's going to turn out in the videos but if you hear it that's what it is so here we go let's get started so uh, on the back end of the truck uh, there's these boxes that all build out and mount along the sides and then the body panels cover them pretty straightforward stuff. It's a lot of busy work, like this drops in here. It's held in with a couple screws, but before it's dropped in, one of these magnets attaches in here with two screws and a washer. You can see it right there. And then these hinges drop in with washers and screws so that uh, the door is attached to them. Obviously the magnets hold them shut. There's only one magnet on this side identical box on the other side with one magnet on the opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and put those together. Well, I've got the, uh, the hinges in and this bulkhead. The hinges, you can actually adjust how tight they are with these screws here. So I've got enough tension that will hold them in position, but not enough to keep them from opening and closing. And then on the back side, Took me a minute to figure out what they're showing here. But there's a recess right here, and a nut drops into it, and then you use a a little washer and a screw to hold the nut on in these two positions. So the other side builds exactly the same, but but uh, 90 degrees opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and build that. The next uh, two boxes are these, and same thing, hinge drops in here, bulkhead drops in here, a magnet mounts in here with a couple washers and a screw, so I'll go ahead and get that put together, I'll actually do both of them. So I finished the forward and the aft side sections, now it's this rear section, and Pretty much the same thing, hinges drop in, there's a magnet that drops in down here at the bottom, but one thing is in the actuator set for the, uh, the tow boom, there's a switch that mounts inside this one. And so I want, and also the control box is going to mount inside one of them, so you have to refer to both sets of instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the uh, hinges and there's a little box here that mounts the switch and I'll go ahead and do that. So the, the box, this cross brace mounts in and then it mounts to these uprates right here and there's also these tabs that mount in here and there's a whole bunch of uh, machine screws that screw this piece on and then the opposite side just mounts in there like that and sandwich in. Boy, that makes a real strong uh, assembly. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to use a lot of Loctite when I put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that. I mounted the cross pieces on here. And this unit mounts like this. You can see that the battery clips here, so the battery will slide in there. And this 
mounts up in here. So before I, I mount this on, I'm going to double sticky tape this down to the bracket, but I also need to pull the wires. This is the micro switch and it mounts to this little bracket which then mounts down underneath. I'm going to go ahead and mount that. It's I can't really show it because of the location it's in. But we'll get that mounted and the wire's long enough to reach up to where the, the box is going to mount. So this um, bracket here just mounts to these uprights like that and the other side will mount on the opposite side. There's plenty of room to get in here to run wiring later so I'm going to go ahead and mount both sides and that will give me all my under framing. Finally get to do some fun parts like body panels. So these are our rear body panels. I think they go something like that. Um, they have an interesting screw. It's an Allen screw and it screws in to several locations and the instructions tell you to leave it about seven millimeters proud so about like that and then this little bracket mounts on here I think that probably tucks underneath something. So you can see I've already gotten my studs here, my bracket here. I've got to do this side and then we'll get to work figuring out how these fit. Fun to do this stuff because it, it shows a lot of progress. Okay, with all the, the studs mounted, this little bracket fits under this tab here. And this is just going to fit in here like this. Uses some screws to hold it. This one fits in here. Same thing, there's some uh, screws here. And then I have to get back in underneath to put some nuts on it, which is actually going to be quite a trick because it's getting to be pretty big and heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and mount these panels on both sides. All of a sudden, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, just that little bit really added a lot. Well, one little thing, if you're building this kit, I went to mount this panel and realized that this cross brace fits right here and has the backing nuts that hold the panel on. I missed it in the instructions. It's kind of hidden in all these lines right there. So now I have to take a few screws apart so I can spread these enough to get this in. Uh, just wanted to point that out that uh, you want to make sure you get that in there. The uh, LEDs fit easily into place. I just wanted to point out that I use this micro crystal clear to uh, to glue in these little clear lenses because it doesn't fog clear plastic and it also dries clear. The other thing that's kind of neat is there's probably hard to see them but there's little pins molded in the top so and there's pins on top of these so when you place the top on it captures the lens on the top and the bottom to keep them from breaking loose. Uh, should be a very, very solid little light bar. So I'll go ahead and finish that up and screw the top on. Well, there's the uh, light bar and the rear lights, which just bolt in. And then you can see I've, I've mounted the screws here. This just it's on like that. The wires pulled through. So the uh, ACU unit mounts back in this bay. And I want to get that mounted before I put the rest of the body on. And this micro switch 
Now it's right up in here. And then this wire also has to run down to this base. So I'm going to mount that, run this wiring, and start plugging this unit in. Pretty straightforward wiring setup. The, the two micro switches plug into J3 and J2. The switch here plugs into J1, and that's a, a switch that you can operate the boom manually from the truck. And then this plugs into the motor. Uh, this wire here runs up here, and I'll run it out through the battery door. And then these two plug together to plug into the battery. And then this will run forward and plug into J9 on the MFC. So I'm going to route this through here, mount this in here. I'm not going to mount it uh, super permanent because there's a setup switch here. I might have to pull it out a little bit to, to get it set up. I'll see what that looks like when I get there. But I'll at least get everything tucked away and get this wiring tied up. And then put the rest of the body panels on. Now the next step is pretty straightforward, is just to mount these. And they fit really well. Tamiya has these uh, silver colored 8mm self tapping screws, which is unusual for them, but the reason they're silver is there's orange lenses that cover these up. So I guess that's so that looks like like a bulb. So I'll go ahead and mount these on both sides and then come back and do the lensing. With the body panels uh, mounted, the next step are these panels here. There's a bunch of them. And these light lenses which go all over the place. They mount with some more of these little teeny screws. Uh, and uh, I don't know how many extras you get, so have to be careful not to drop them. The, uh, I already did this side. So you can see the panels. Uh, you can see all the light lenses. There's a bunch. It takes a while. There's just a lot of little screws. So I'll go ahead and do the other side and then it's time to work on the doors. And mounting these panels is pretty easy. They just mount up with a couple screws. And to me it uh, gives you <coughs> Allen head screws. <coughs> Excuse me, which is wonderful, especially if you have a driver like this, because they hang under the screws pretty good. So I'll go ahead and finish mounting these panels. Well, I've, uh, I've got all the doors on. So you can see that good. The uh, hinges are adjusted so that uh, the doors stay where I put them. And uh, my fat fingers don't grab the latches good, but yeah, they fit nice. They work really well. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, there's non-skid on the tops of these. I was thinking when I bought the kit that I would use some uh, like 800 grit uh, black uh, wet or dry sandpaper. But when I opened up the Tamiya decals, I found that these non-skid decals actually have a non-skid texture. It's just beautiful. I am so impressed. Uh, continue to me it just never ceases to amaze me. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and put these on before I add the back pieces. And uh, typically, uh, pretty straightforward, I just cut these out with an X-Acto knife. I'll probably use a straight edge and, uh, and then just stick them on. The uh, non-skid decals went on real easily. The only trick is just to make sure you trim them right at the edge. Uh, as I'm getting ready to install the back panels, I discovered that there's a little bracket in here that I forgot to install right there. 
and there is no way I'm going to get that thing on with these panels on. So, I have to take the panels back off. Don't be like Bob. Make sure you put that little bracket on when you're building yours. So I'm going to take this off, put the little bracket on, put it back together. Well, the tail lights I had put together from earlier, the uh, light lenses are two pieces. I glued the clear piece in with micro crystal clear, but then it's got this decal that goes on the back. Um, rather neat, but it it actually looks really cool uh, when it's installed. So. This just mounts on, on the back side. It's going to be interesting to see how my glue holds. And there's a couple of, uh, of pins here, alignment pins, so I'm just going to cut the decal around the pins. And pick it away and I wind up with this which then sits on here like this and I'll glue it on with micro crystal clear and then these mount into the into the rear step assembly there's a couple of uh, steps that glue on here and then this assembly mounts back here and that's that little bracket that I had forgotten earlier, so that goes like that. So we'll get that put together. So uh, I got my steps glued in, and they turned out really nice. Uh, these actually worked really good. The decal on the inside looks terrific, and I glued it on with micro crystal clear, and it's very solid. So all I have to do now is mount these in here. This one mounts in here. And then this, there's that bracket I was missing, will mount back on here. So I'm going to go ahead and mount those and then I'm going to talk about running uh, running wiring. Got a bunch of that to do. Well I've got this laying on its side. It should be able to run the wiring fine. <clears throat> I'll run it along the chassis and then up between the bodies, I'll tie everything into a loom. The kit came with a bunch of these really neat, to me, Eclipse. They have a little sticker on the back. You can run the wiring through and just bend this over. Um, it, I'm going to use some spiral wrap. It unfortunately didn't come with spiral wrap. Should have, to me, probably the one thing you missed. Um, which I'll use to kind of wrap some of the wiring as I run it along the chassis. Uh, it's not hard, it's just kind of tedious to get in there. but. Uh, We'll do that and run the other wiring into the battery compartment from the, the um, control unit for the boom. And then I'll pull the body off and plug everything in. Oh boy! There's just a little bit of wiring in here. Let me explain to you what we've got going on. So the first thing I have to plug in are these wires from the light bar. And I've got those already marked. That's pretty straightforward. There's plenty of wire and plenty of room. They're going to have to go down underneath the body and back up. These are the wires that I just ran along the frame and they go to the tail lights. So we have the tail lights, the backup lights, and the two turn signals. And there's plenty of wire and they'll plug in. This is the wire from the control unit for the boom. It's not long enough. Tamiya, look, you had one kit this fits in. Uh, you could have put four more inches of wire on this. So I ran it as straight as possible. It, it just, there's no way it's long enough. So I'm going to add an extension to it and I'm actually going to reroute it down the frame and pull it back up with the other wires. You can see that I've got my cab wirings already hooked up and the front bumper wiring of course is already hooked up. So I've got to plug all these in and pretty straightforward, uh, but it's just a lot of tie-up because, as you can see, this cab fits pretty tightly against this. 
So I'm going to spend some time routing wires, putting on t labels, adding extensions, and uh, and then this, I don't know if you can see this, but this wire here is the power wire for the boom unit. I originally had it pulled up through here, but I'm going to reroute it up the frame and up into the battery box. Um, no big deal, I just decided it would be a better place to put it. Uh, along with rerunning this up the frame. So, I'm going to go ahead and do some of that and plug in the wiring and see what I can neaten up and I'll show you what it looks like. While I have the truck up on the side, I just thought I'd show one of these little clips in action. I know it's kind of behind the drive shaft, but here's those two wires I was talking about. And I'll just pull them in here. And then that little tab just bends over. and locks the wires in really nicely. One other little quick note while I'm uh, doing this, I've got my extension here that I'm going to put on. One thing I always do, and I've mentioned this before, but not on this build, is when I use a servo extension, I use a piece of soft wire um, to tie them together. These wires get tugged on and pulled a lot, and you do not want them to become disconnected. Really hard to trace down afterwards, so I, I always tie them together. Dental floss works good too. I just like the soft wire, but there now I have enough wire to reach my MFC. What's going on here? Well, I hooked up the lights and tested them, and I put two of the bulbs in the wrong place. Uh, I mixed up the turn signal and the tail light on this side, so I've got to just pop this open and, and move them. Uh, that's pretty easy. But the other thing is, I used a red LED um, for the tail light, and with this red lens and the the grill underneath it, it just wasn't bright enough for me. So I'm going to switch the LED for a white one, uh, which the problem is when you shine a, le a red LED through a red filter, it kind of it kind of cuts it way down. So the white LED will be much brighter. It's going to be behind the red. So I'm going to move a couple bulbs and switch a few LEDs and put it back together. Uh, yes, I screw up sometimes. I screw up regularly. I don't usually show it, but I figured this one, yep, I did it. So I've got the, uh, the lights back in. And basically, here's my lighting. I've got the emergency flashers. I've got the tail lights. And then brake lights and backup lights. Brake lights. Backup lights. So that's all working great. Now I can just tuck away my wiring. So for tying up the wiring, I like to do things in harnesses. So this is the harness for the front bumper. This is the harness that goes to the back frame. And that will tuck down here. It'll have to go underneath the body. And then this is the harness from the body. So that way I can kind of, in the future, have something to, uh, to look at if I'm if I have a problem. So that's just going to tuck back in here. This will go underneath. You can see another harness right there, which is the one for the control panel. And we'll put the body back on. Just talk about a little bit about how I do these graphics. Uh, and the Tamiya graphics are the same way. First off, I always use a new X-Acto knife blade. Um, they, they wear out way faster than you think, and I'll usually go through a couple three on a model. So I get them in boxes of a hundred and use a brand new blade when I'm doing uh, decals. The old blades, by the way, I just keep a, an old pill bottle here to throw them into. You do not want to stick those in your garbage can. It's hazardous to your, your uh, trash collectors. So then on these uh, decals, 
you don't even need to cut all the way through. You can actually just cut through the top layer and they'll peel off nicely. Okay, I just thought I'd show my technique. I'm going to cut a piece for here. So I'm going to cut a piece a little extra long with a pair of scissors. And uh, we'll peel off the backing here. If you have a really sharp exacto knife, this is pretty easy. So I'm going to leave it extra long on both ends. Lay it right under the edge where I want it. And then with my, my really sharp X-Acto knife, you can actually cut without even scratching the paint if you're careful. You get good at it. Cut that one there. And then we're going to trim this one right along the body line here. down in. So that's the technique I use all the way around. This one's a little proud right here. I'm going to trim that off. All right. So I'll keep going and go all the way around here. So I've got the uh, gold stripes done, and now I want to add a graphic up to the top here. And this is one of the graphics that my daughter cut. It's a piece of transfer tape over the top of a, a Cricut cut lettering. The nice thing about this lettering is there's no backing. So when it's on there, there's no clear to, to have to look at. I've cut the transfer paper so it lines up with the bottom of the area. And we'll just center that, lay those down, and voila. So that's how those go on and I've got a few more of those to do. The uh, New York Fire Department graphic came from a place called Phoenix Graphics Online and they do all kinds of uh, medical, fire, police stickers. Um, I'll put a link to their website in the description. I, I basically just lined up a uh, piece of tape here and made a center mark where I want the decal to be. And these are just, again, a simple peel and stick. So I will get that one on where I want it. Voila, and we'll do the other side. Starting to come alive. You can see I put a Fleet Services decal across here, and I just put it across and then cut it with a knife afterwards. I've got a bunch of um, these small station numbers, and uh, yeah, sorry I'm in the way of the camera, but. I'll be putting those around uh, various places on the truck. I've got one up on the roof like a helicopter would see it. I'm going to have them on the back and the side. Station 290 is, uh, is in honor of a retired New York uh, Fire Department firefighter, and that was his station. So we'll get a, I've got a bunch of those. We'll get them on. I'll do the fleet services on the other side, and we're going to be just about done. The final step in the instructions are the roof pieces, the horn and the couple antennas and they show them gluing them on but I do not like to glue these on so I use the thin 
double sticky tape that comes in the kit. I find it works really, really well. So, put on the two antennas and then it's done. And I'll clean off my bench, we'll get some pictures of it, and then I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that's run it. Okay, so here is the finished machine. I am just thrilled with how it turned out. It was just great to build. Um, the fit was amazing. It's complicated, but it is really cool. The uh, tow bar in the back, I was having problems trying to figure out um, how to keep it straight. But that's actually pretty simple. You just pull one of these snap pins here and reposition, this reposition this out to an extended position and then it pivots. So when you're towing a truck and going around a corner, you can pivot it and you slide it back in and that locks it into place so it doesn't pivot. So when it's up, it stays straight. Um, the, uh, it's big, it's heavy. Now I've got, uh, I've actually got it turned on. So I have the vibration motor hooked up. It's maybe a little hard to see on video. We can flip through the lighting. So the first level is the upper lights. Next level is the light bar. Next level is the headlights. And then finally on my electronic switch, I've got these lights, the dash lights, and that uh, FDNY bulkhead that's lit up in the back. And you can see the tail lights back in here. So yeah, the lighting all is uh, is fantastic. I'm going to wait until it gets a little darker outside, and then I'm going to drive it around with the lighting on. I'll show that on video, so I'll be back for that. And uh, then I'm going to probably take some still pictures, which I'm going to add to the end of the video, so you can uh, see some some better resolution still pictures of it. Uh, Fire Department New York New York tow truck, uh, just amazing kit. Uh, I know there's been a lot of talk about how much money it is. Seriously, guys, it's worth it. It is, it is an awesome kit, and uh, I, I just uh, can't say enough nice about it. So, so there we go. Let's see. Check out my website, hobbyconcepts.net. Thumbs up my video. I, I love to get those. And subscribe. Uh, more new to Mia stuff coming here pretty soon. Lots of builds coming up. So uh, uh, subscribe and stay tuned for that. And then like I said, uh, I'm not going to be talking the rest of the video, but I'm going to be showing some pictures of it in operation with the lighting on when it's a little bit darker. We'll take it outside. And then some still pictures, and that'll be at the end of the video. So guys, thanks for watching.